Oh, Carrie, we have a question for you now that you're back from Bobby Bob. Carrie, what's your take on everything's going to be all white? I'm happy to see so many non-white people calling it bullshit. Gives me hope. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, let's watch that for people who yes. don't, who haven't seen it, who aren't sure what this is about. Uh, let me go to the private chat because uh, we have it in here, and it's wild because Carrie, you used to you used to manage woke comics, mm -hmm. including one of the ones in this series. Really? Okay, <laughs> and I also know Margaret Cho. Yeah. Oh snap! And I uh, I know Char I've done Sherrod Smalls. This is him right here. I've done his podcast. I would say we're acquaintances. Um, we're not BFFs, so. This was interesting. All right, let's watch it. I think what annoys me most about white people is when they pretend like they're the victim. <laughs> What's also annoying is when they, you know, when they kill us. What is fragile about whiteness when everything has been constructed around it? Every part of who I am has been distorted or criminalized. It's really just a bunch of white lies. <laughs> <laughs> You're not patriots. You're ridiculous. Hmm. One of the definitions of American whiteness is ignorance. White what? People, we are not your problem. You are. Should white people today feel any responsibility? For oh, saying? I wish they would just reverse it here. Imagine um, yeah. them saying black people are their property. Jesus was not white. Think of geography. Ain't no way Jesus walked around with blonde hair and blue eyes. White culture fears the end of the world. For us as native people, the end of the world already happened like multiple times. Token Indian. Symbols and monuments. These are mementos of racism. Bring that sap to that. Then, I don't know. TCBY yogurt or something. Everybody can get behind. <laughs> Not the lactose intolerance. to be told about history. We have to make sure that these stories are told from our perspective. We have to make sure we control the narrative. Yeah. Systemic and institutionalized racism. We want to make you guys feel bad. We don't care about equality. It's a wild place. I know Harriet and Frederick be up there just like, what is they going to do? Sassy black woman dehumanizes white people. What's now? I appreciate that Amanda Seals used poorer grammar, like just specifically for this trailer. Like she, I know she's, <laughs> she speaks very clearly and very well, but she really liked to, for some reason she dumbed herself down because maybe she thinks, I don't know, she, I don't know if she's going to bond or be more, uh, I don't know, relatable if she speaks poorly. I just, I feel it, like this, whole race talk is just so boring now it is me. i just it's like it's also yeah. this thing where it's like oh if you're a person of color you can't be racist it's only the white people who are racist and if you're white you're automatically racist and it's like the truth is everybody everybody has moments everybody's said stuff you know and it's just i don't know it's just so it does boring. seem tired I, I was shocked to see they're making another show i'm like how many shows about this are they gonna make they've done dear white people they've done like three uh, this is maybe the third or fourth show with of this theme that i've seen them trying to try to push here's the good news i think this shows that it's almost in its death throes because mm -hmm. they're getting desperate and they're doubling down and tripling down on this ideology. And if you look at the comments on stuff like this, they turn the comments off because the public is turning against this woke bullshit. And that trailer is racist. However, what this belief system is at its core, it's it's actually, it just uses race and racism. It's just another, it's Marxism mutated. It It, it doesn't really believe the shit it says about race because if it did, here's how you know they're lying. Look at the look at the people of color they put in a show like that. Look at the people of color they'll talk to and look at the ones they won't. Hmm. It's not about race. It's about ideology. Right. Look at the white people they talk to and look at the ones they want. They won't talk to it only if you speak the belief system, they'll interview you for a show like that, whether you're white or black or Asian. If you speak the belief system, that's all they care about is pushing the belief system. If you don't speak it, they're not going to talk to you. They're going to call you an Uncle Tom if you're black. They're going to shame you. They're going to call you racist. If you're, if you're Joe Rogan, they're going to say, you know, you're worse than 
but it's not really about race. It's Marxism that's like using race in a weird way. Right, because way. you can't argue with racism. You can't argue with like, oh, you're a racist. And it's like it disarms you. It make it like it because they know the power of that. They know it yes. renders the average person um, just, you know, it makes them quiet and uh, kind of harmless. Uh, okay, oh, uh, anything, anything but that. Call yes. me anything but that, you know. But it's bullshit. They don't even believe the stuff they say. When they say white people need to shut up and listen to black voices, that's they don't really mean that. They mean white people need to shut up. Unless they believe the ideology, then they can speak. And also, white people need to shut up and, and listen to black voices who speak the ideology. Don't yeah. listen to any black voices who don't. Don't listen to Eric July. Don't right. listen to Hotep Jesus. Bryce yeah. And yeah. I think the problem is a lack of sense of humor too. I think mm -hmm. these people all take themselves very seriously and they take everything very seriously. And that's usually a symptom of somebody who does not have a good sense of humor. Oh right. yeah, absolutely. Yet half of these people would consider themselves and are, I guess, comedians do stand up, you know? So that's interesting. Well, yeah, Sherrod Small and Amanda Seals are both stand ups. Margaret Cho's oh. in there. Margaret Cho! How did you feel seeing Margaret Cho in there? <laughs> of course she's in there. She's <laughs> pandering to social justice. She doesn't even believe in this shit. No? Like, so she's no. like, I just need a paycheck. Like, she's not a sincere no. There, the thing is, it becomes culturally dominant. Okay, so you know how when Christianity was culturally dominant, and then you have all these hucksters and con artists who move it, and then you've got the mega churches and the people, and everybody's Christian when it's, you know, holy rollers in the 80s or whatever, right? Okay, now the cultural pop, the culturally popular religion is woke. Yes, and so right. you've got the true believers get there first. You've got the true believers. And then after the true believers come, the everyone followers. else yeah the people yes. who don't want to get fired the people who don't want to say the yes. wrong thing the people who are afraid of conflict you have to fit in with the joneses and in hollywood woke is king right now everyone in the entertainment industry if you're not woke you'll get called a racist you'll get thrown out so they're all speaking it you got comedians doing woke shows now who never who's the guy from australia oh my god chrissy eddie uh, izzard no, I love Eddie Izzard. Who's the uh, uh, Nick Swords? Jim, Jim, uh, Jim Jeffries. Jim Jeffries. That dude has a woke show. Like what? what? <laughs> he doesn't. He oh, just Hannah Gatsby. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Anne is here. Um, maybe she's putting her makeup on. Oh, I'm sorry, hi, guys. Yeah. I got a little animated about Anna. that. I'm hearing I'm a little sorry. bit of an echo. It was great, oh, Carrie. Let me fix it. Is that better? Yeah. Carrie, everything you were saying was 100% fire and flames. So, yeah, I always appreciate your your take on these things because you worked so deeply in that world for so long. 